Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to GraphsCon 2022. Today we are going to talk about intuitive progressive delivery across microservices in a dependency graph. Myself, Hari Rongali, engineering manager at Intuit, and I'm also one of the maintainers for Argo project, specifically Argo Rollouts. And my co-speaker, Rohit. Hi, this is Rohit Agarwal. Uh, I work at Databricks as a software engineer. Some of the areas I'm focusing right now is traffic infrastructure, service mesh, and also safe deployments. I'm an active contributor and maintainer for Argo Rollouts project. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Databricks. So we are a unified analytics platform, helping our customers do, uh, get insights out of the data. We did 800 million in ARR last year and have seen like 75% year-on-year growth. We have offerings across all three major clouds, AWS, Azure, and GCP. We are an active user of Argo project. Um, we, are, uh, we are currently working on scaling thousands of deployments across 40 plus regions using automations built on top of uh, Argo rollouts. Uh, Intuit, founded in 1983 and evolved ever since for the past few decades. Currently at 12 plus billion dollars of revenue and 100 million plus customers. Primarily a fanatic software with well-known products like TurboTax, QuickBooks, Mint, Credit Karma, MailChimp, and so forth. Intuit invests around 2 billion plus in R&D and it's very tech heavy with several well-known open source projects coming out of it. And one of them is Argo. Argo, as you all know, is a set of Kubernetes native tools to manage jobs, applications, and resources. Started as a part of Apertix and acquired by Intuit in 2018. And now part of CNCF as an intuitive project. Now on track to graduation. As Argo evolved, there are multiple projects come out of it solving varied use cases, and some of the projects are Argo Workflows, which is a container-driven workflow engine with use cases that solves batch processing and map reduce, and some of the uh, domains like AI modeling and machine learning topics. And Argo CD, on the other hand, is a GitOps-based continuous delivery system uh, with rich user experience to manage these resources. In Argo CD itself, it evolved with several sub-projects like application sets to manage the clusters at scale and notification engine and so forth. And Argo rollouts to bring in some of the advanced progressive delivery or deployment strategies and to solve progressive delivery with automated rollbacks. And some of the advanced topics like A-B testing using experimentation and several capabilities. And last, Argo events. It's a event-based dependency manager. Argo project or ecosystem is continues to evolve, and it's currently adoption status in GitOps. Today, we are going to, talk, to show you how we can use this Argo ecosystem in solving the current use case. Before going to the progressive delivery uh, in a dependency graph, my co-speaker will talk about what is progressive delivery and what is it for a microservices. Let's take a minute to recap what progressive delivery means. Progressive delivery is built on top of continuous delivery with more features like gradual rollouts, canarying, A-B testing, matrix analysis. In a nutshell, it's these four things, releasing of a product in a controlled manner, having complete control over the blast radius during the updates, supporting bring your own matrix analysis, and then finally having automated promotions or rollbacks as per the KPIs. Let's see how progressive delivery in a micro microservice ecosystem works. We have a stable version for a service called V1. We are trying to roll out a new version, say V2. Uh, we do canary, we collect and analyze the matrix. If everything is looking good, we mark the version two as stable. If not, then we roll back to version one by shifting all the traffic back to, back to the stable version. And then we maybe trigger a notification saying that your new version rollout fails. Now let's see what progressive delivery looks like with Argo rollouts. We have a controller which interacts with a custom CRD called rollouts. We have an analysis template which contains a set of rules or steps on how to shift traffic and perform analysis. We have a stable replica set that you see at the bottom. Now, when we are trying to release a new version of the service, the controller will create a new replica set for the canary pods. Uh, it will also create an analysis run object which will analyze all the matrix. We'll start gradually shifting traffic from stable to canary, depending on the rules. Both the stable as well as the canary versions are emitting Prometheus matrix. Analysis run is consuming these matrix to make decisions, and based on whether the analysis is successful or not, 
it will either shift more traffic from stable to canary, or it will roll back uh, to, uh, to stable version, and then we'll just uh, mark, the, mark the canary as degraded. You can also integrate it with service mesh if you want more gradual control over how you shift traffic from stable to canary. With that, I'll pass it on to Harry to talk about service dependency graphs. Thank you, Rohit. Uh, as you all know, or see the mesh architecture for the services, it's not a new concept. As companies grow and scale, these kind of dependencies happens. And let me talk about the situation at Intuit. Intuit currently has 2,000 plus services, and several of them form these graphs. And we have several incidents happen because of a change in one of the services as impact on downstream services. These are some of the snippets that I posted here. You can read through it. Sorry for masking some of them for the confidentiality. And if you read one of the snippet, one of the services changed because of a change in use in, or which is not communicated ahead to the impacted users. Because, and the impact is the login failed. And what they did is restore the, what are the impacted change to a previous state, that is a stable state. And these are just the few of them I reported here. But in Intuit, we have like 30% incidents happen because of these changes. And we measure a KPA called MTTR, which is nothing but mean time to restore, to measure the operational excellence of these services. And what we are trying to do is to reduce this MTTR to as low as possible. And for microservices, we are using rollouts and a process delivery capability to reduce this MTTR. But Let's see how we can do in services that are in a graph model. Right. To move forward, let's look at some simple graph. Let's say there are four services, S1, S2, S3, S4. And they're in a state, V1 state, which is a stable one. Let's say there is an induced change in S4. And because of the change, some hypothetically, let's say the service one got impacted. What ideally needs to happen is, it needs to roll back to the previous state so that everything needs to be done automatically. Usually in companies uh, like Intuit and all, there are some coordinated teams or integration teams which work with all the services in that dependency graph. They release and they monitor, do uh, maybe looking at the dashboards and everything. The, one of the main thing or is there are a lot of manual steps involved. There are a lot of uh, manual hours that are put in to make sure the release process is smooth. But how we can make sure all of this can be automated and can smoothly release and roll back if there's an issue. And in the next slide, I'm going to show how our use of Argo ecosystem projects and create an architecture or a flow to solve this current use case, current problem. Let's read through from left to right, down and left. So start with a change in S4. And what happens is, a change in S4 triggers a canary and run the analysis. If it is successful, move forward, or if it is failed, you roll back. As Rohit mentioned earlier, how a rollout or process delivery happens in a microservice. This is usually a capability that is provided by rollouts. Now, let's say it is successful. Now, it should go to or trigger notifications as an events to the downstream dependent services. And we are using Argo events to capture those events. And that one integrates with workflows. What workflows can bring in is creating a batch of jobs for each of these S1, S2, and S3. As you've seen here, each S1, S3 uh, batch jobs are, again, jobs that run KPAs to measure these metrics against these services. If everything is successful, it will exit itself. Or if anything fails, what needs to happen is it needs to roll back. And we are using Argo CD capability to trigger a rollback via previous state or a stable state. So this is the currently uh, the workflow or the architecture that we are uh, will be demoing in the next few slides. Um, okay, correct. Okay, thank you. In full screen. So as you see here, here I'm showing an Argo CD, which is running locally, with four services. Rollouts demo, which is where I'm inducing a change. And there is three other services, which I'm treating as a dependency ones. And there is a rollout and workflows also deployed. And this is the workflow UI, where there are no workflows. And let's go through in detail about what rollout demo has, 
and what are the specifications. And also, we'll, uh, I'll talk about what are the templates that are created in this. So if you see here, this is the notification which is introduced to send the notifications. So let's uh, look more detail in terms of what rollout patch has. So on rollout completed, send the web notifications to the downstream services, which is again captured by workflows. And the next thing is uh, the traffic routing using Istio. And there is an image that is the yellow that is called. And let's look at the workflows as well. Here, I have a workflow template that is added. And here, in this template, I have a series of jobs that are defined, which actually runs this analysis. And if there is issue, whether it is success or failure, an action is defined uh, to roll back or roll forward as a part of this workflow template. Let's look at, okay, again, there is no workflows. Only the template is binded together. Now let's look at, now let's introduce a change in rollout demo. So in the current rollouts demo, it's a yellow. So I'll show you the rendering part where it should have a yellow color is rendered just for the uh, demo purpose. And I'll show you, I'll change it to blue. So as I said earlier, it's a GitOps model. So Argo CD as a GitOps delivery system. It will recognize the GitOps change. And if you refresh, it has the capability to show the out of sync from the user interface. Again, teams use auto, auto syncs and everything, which are again, uh, some of the capabilities Argo City already provides. But right now, it into at least, we make sure like uh, everything is pipeline driven. And as you see, it is a yellow and blue is the only change. When I sync it, it should create a new ones. Again, as you see, I'm doing back and forth just to make sure there is no workflow created at any stage until the rollout is successful. And when the rollout is created, the canary object is created, there is a traffic routing in the virtual service, and the analysis run is also running. And as you see, the blue and yellow are rendered in this graph. And these are other services where the other colors like purple, red, yellow are defined just for the demo purpose without not much of meaning. And as we are care about once this microservice is successful, what happens after that, right? So that is where I think we can use promote flow to move forward just to skip this whole analysis. Still no workflow. So let's uh, do the workflow or promote flow so that we can capture this a rollout completed, which should automatically trigger these notifications, and it will be captured by the event and for the workflow. So as I did, it is completed. There is a workflow is created. As you see, these are the batch of jobs. And if you see the template also, there is a, OK, so here what I'm doing is I'm introducing an error rate. I want to show the, or an impact because of the change in rollouts demo. And what you're seeing in the jobs, I've configured for one minute, but you can configure for days or even hours based on the use case. You can run this KPS against it. And if there is an issue happens, what happens, let's give it a second or so, so that it will be completed. And if there is a change happens, what actually happens is you need to revert based on the change history to the stable state. Once all those jobs are done, it detects there is a change. So there is an action downstream which will verify the state of each job. And there is a rollback detected because of a change or the error that is introduced in one of the services. And I can show you in the side by side what happens when the rollback is completed and there is a smooth transition from blue to yellow, which is the yellow is a stable state. So if we give a second or so, the change will, once the rollback is completed, you'll see smooth transition uh, from, okay, rollback is completed here. And you'll be able to see this change in a second. Yeah. So you saw that blue to yellow is changed because we triggered Argo City APIs to call move to the previous state because we saw change or something impacted in the downstream services. Let's go back to the Argo City UI. And you'll be able to see if we refresh, you'll see this diff. So what diff means is it just triggered yellow to or blue to yellow. Ideally, you can also use the GitOps model where you can send a commit to the GitOps and then get it committed as a part of it. As a demo purpose, we showed so that it will be more readable. So this is the current demo which will show you we're using Argo workflows, Argo CD, Argo loads, and events to solve on use case where it is a very common use case that companies are seeing. The next, we will, Rohit will talk about production readiness and some of the features 
that we have identified as a part of this uh, uh, use case. Okay. All right, let me talk a little bit about production readiness. So one of the pain points we had at Databricks was on configuring the right thresholds or right set of matrix so that it doesn't trigger any false positives. We recently added a new feature in our Google rollouts called dry runs, which allows you to mark a set of matrix running in the dry run mode. These dry runs can help engineers to add new matrix to their existing rollouts object without worrying about the risk of impacting their current production workloads. Uh, it would only emit matrix, but then have no impact on the final state of the rollouts. Here is a quick example. If you are able to see, uh, this is how you can add more matrix to the dry run mode. Matrix name here is a regex, and you can specify how many matrix you want to run in the dry run mode. It would not impact any final state of the rollout. It would just emit the matrix. Uh, while making some of these matrix run in the dry run mode, you also want to capture all the data points and not just the uh, top 10. Before or prior to version 1.2 of rollouts, it would only capture the latest 10 measurements and then would garbage collect everything. So we also added a new feature for measurement retention with which you can customize how many measurements you, you want to retain. You can retain like 100, you can retain 200, you can retain everything uh, which is getting emitted. Uh, this is it's a very similar idea. You just like have a measurement retention, you specify the matrix name, and then you specify the limit, like how many measurements you want to retain. We are working on adding more observability, advanced observability, so you can just like uh, export all the analysis results in, in S3 bucket, maybe in file system, and then do any post rollout analysis if you want to. Um, you can read about it. We just have a very nice blog published in version 1.2. If you want, you can read about like dry runs and measurement retention uh, on the blog. Let me talk a little bit about what's next. So we have these cool features coming in in the new version of Argo rollouts. Uh, there are dry runs, which is currently a service level. We want to expand it to the dependency level to get more confidence. We have graph generation based on uh, the traffic flow. We will be adding anomaly detection with intuitive scoring. We are really excited about the traffic mirroring. You can mirror traffic to a set of upstreams without impacting the final user. We will add uh, features for ad hoc analysis, more notification support, and then um, uh, the uh, dry run simulation across services. With that, I'll uh, close it up uh, and open for questions. Thank you so much for attending the talk. Great. Uh, are there any questions? If there are, we've got uh, we've got a mic over there, and I can also run a mic to you if you're having trouble getting up to it. Hi, I'm Hen. Uh, about the dry out that you uh, the dry run plugin, is it supposed to be part of a process? When going to production, how, how is it involved? How is it integrated inside the process of CD? Right. So with dry runs, what you can do is, like, if you want to run the analysis and you don't know what is the current threshold, like you're you're trying to add more rules, but then you have no idea what the threshold looks like. You can run those matrix in dry run to collect more data, and then you can fine tune your matrix. Like, okay, whether 10 errors in one minute sounds good, and then, then you can take it to production, rather than just like estimating, oh, I'll just configure it for 10, 10 errors in one minute, and then it fails, it rolls back, it triggers a bunch of alerts to your on call, and it's just a nightmare. Any more questions? Well, there are no more questions. <laughs> if there are, just let us know. And you can also, um, you'll be around as well. Yeah, right? we'll be around if you have any more questions, any of the features. Uh, yeah, and if you want to see anything in the future in Argo Rollouts, please come talk to us. Great. Cool, thank you. Thanks thank you so much. much.